Everybody, it is Thursday, June eighteenth, and welcome back to a virtual semester of American government and politics, at Simmons College. I thank you all for for tuning in to YouTube. Please don't forget to comment and uh, leave a comment below that you saw the video. That you tuned into the video. That's how you get your participation grade. That plus any questions or comments you may have about the week's material. But first and foremost, leave that comment below. That's, that's how I count you present, just like you're in the classroom. So, with that, two things you need to know this week. Number one, we're going to talk about the levels of government, federal, state, and local. Number two, we're going to have a quiz this week. It's going to be due by next Thursday. I'll assign the quiz towards the end of this video. And then I'll also include it in the email when I send out the link to the video. So you'll hear it at the end of this video. We'll I'll discuss it a bit and give you some guidance on how to proceed with the quiz. And then I'll put it in the email as well. The quiz is 10% of your grade for the semester. First, a review of last week. We talked about the branches of the federal government. That's executive branch, headed by the president of the United States. The legislative branch, it's the House of Representatives and the United States Senate, and the judicial branch, the federal court system, the head of which is the United States Supreme Court. The executive branch, they enforce laws, they carry out the law. Legislative branch, they pass statutes, and perhaps most importantly, they pass the federal budget. Judicial branch, they interpret the laws. One thing I did not get into too much last week, but it's actually really important to remember and for you to know, is that all three branches of government create laws. Uh, I think in grade school, they, there's an overemphasis on statutes passed by Congress. They are really important. Those are the second most uh, powerful type of law, the, co the Constitution being the most powerful, being the ultimate law of the United States. Statutes come under that. But then after that, our executive branch laws, when someone talks about the law, or that's against the law, or that's illegal, when I say quote unquote the law, what do I mean? I don't just mean statutes. I mean anything the government has promulgated or put forth that governs how people behave. That either says something that we must do, like pay taxes, or specifies things that we must not do, like commit crimes. That's kind of a big deal. Think about it for a minute. All three branches make laws. You know that Congress makes statutes. The House, the Senate, they pass something that's either signed or vetoed by the president, and it can become a statute, a very powerful type of law. What about executive orders? The current president, Donald Trump, he loves executive orders. An executive order is something that a president issues that he says this is how the executive branch is going to behave from now on. It's not as powerful as a statute. In fact, if an executive order is directly contrary to a statute, the executive order is null and void. It's no longer the law. Who decides that? The federal courts. That actually happened this morning. This morning early, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that an executive order and a bunch of executive decisions and executive actions by the Trump administration related to uh, what we call dreamers, immigrants who came to the United States as children, that the Trump administration's actions in, the, in that, time, that area violate a statute. They violate a statute passed by Congress signed by a previous president. And an executive order, a law put forth by a president and only a president without Congress, cannot do that, cannot go against the statute. So, the courts themselves also make law. Don't believe me? What about Roe v. Wade? In, in the 1970s, there was no law passed by Congress that said we must allow abortion in this country. In fact, quite the contrary, there were a bunch of state laws, we'll talk about state laws in a minute, but state laws that said abortion is not allowed in this state. The Supreme Court decided 
that the Constitution contains a right to privacy. Now, the words right to privacy are not contained in the Constitution, but the Supreme Court decided that there's enough other language related to that topic in the Constitution that the folks who wrote the Constitution meant for there to be a right to privacy, and furthermore, that there should be a right to privacy, and that reproductive rights of women fall within that right. That the government cannot go to a woman and say, you don't have a right to have an abortion. Now, whether y'all agree with that or disagree, that's not the topic of class today. If we have time this semester, we'll talk about it in some future videos. And feel free to always post questions or comments or contact me directly if you want me to elaborate on a topic, including this one. My point, though, is that the United States Supreme Court issued an opinion, Roe versus Wade, and that became the law. Was it passed by Congress? No. Was it an executive order from a president? No. But it is the law. It still is the law, by the way. So there are many, many types of laws, and all three branches of federal government are involved in making those laws. And that brings me to the levels of government. Last week, we just talked about the federal government. But when I say levels, it's a little more complicated than just having three defined things that are written in the Constitution, like the branches of federal government. Levels are a little more complicated. What I generally mean when I say a level, levels of government, I mean federal government, state governments, and the local governments. The reason this is a little complicated is because the way that those three levels interact with each other really varies over time. It varies depending on what state you're in. It varies depending on who the president is. Uh, it varies a lot. Disagreements between um, the amount of power that state governments versus the federal government should have, have caused lots of problems in this country. Uh, that was the, the, acute, the acute cause of the Civil War. Of course, the big picture chronic cause of the Civil War was slavery. The northern states weren't cool with slavery anymore. Southern states wanted to keep slaves, wanted to keep the right to maintain slavery in their borders. And they told the federal government as a state, I can say no more. I can make up my own rules. Federal government said, no, you can't. State government said, well, then we'll leave the United States. We'll leave the union of the states. And there was a long, bloody war fought over that. Again, the war was really over slavery, but it was a legal argument that came to physical violence and war over whether or not a state has the ability to say no to the federal government. And I'm sure you're familiar with the outcome of that war. The answer is, from then until now, whenever there is a conflict a direct conflict between a federal law and a state law, federal law wins. Federal law wins when there's a direct conflict. Okay, what do I mean by state law? States have branches of government too. There's an executive branch at the state level. The head of that branch is the governor. There's a legislative branch of state government. Uh, Four, I believe it's 49 states have, just like Congress, they have two chambers. They have a House and a Senate. Kentucky has a state House and a state Senate. They meet at the state capitol in Frankfurt. Um, if you're wondering, Nebraska is the one state that doesn't have the two chambers. Nebraska has a, a unicameral legislative body. But, but most states, including Kentucky, are structured in a way, and if you happen to be from Indiana, I know we have one student from West Virginia. West Virginia, same way. Uh, there's, a, there's a West Virginia Senate, West Virginia House, just like Kentucky. So states have an executive branch headed by the governor. States have a legislative branch, with most states having a House and Senate. And they have a judicial branch. There is a Kentucky Supreme Court. But why? Why do we need these levels? Why is there... Why is there a state and a federal executive branch, judicial branch, legislative branch? That answer uh, is complicated, but it's important for you to know. It's when this country was founded, the folks who started this country were strongly opposed to what they had in Europe, which was 
a centralized government, a strong government with either a monarch or in some cases a split split uh, authority between a monarch and a parliament, but, but mostly a central government headed by one man or one woman at the very top of government. And that person had all the power. This country was founded by people who did not care for that structure. In fact, they found that structure to be tyrannical, to be unfair to the people, to the governed. And so they liked this uh, regional autonomy where most things at the time of the country's founding anyway, most things pertaining to Virginians would be decided by the Virginia government. Most things uh, pertaining to Pennsylvanians would be decided by the Pennsylvania government. And you'd have this federal government that would, that would play kind of a, a referee between the states. That's how the country was set up. And it's changed dramatically since then. Since then, the federal government has become much, much, much more powerful. Some people think it's a good thing. Some people think it's a bad thing. But today, all you need to know is that there are state governments. And state governments are very powerful. Federal government is what's in the news. If you hear somebody talking about the Supreme Court, they're probably talking about the U.S. Supreme Court that meets in Washington, D.C. Hear somebody talking about the House or Senate, they're probably talking about the one in Washington, D.C. And you're also more likely to hear people just going about your day to day lives, people talking about, complimenting, complaining about the president of the United States than you are about the governor of Kentucky. Uh, the federal government's higher profile. And in the 21st century, the federal government is very powerful compared to the states. Let's talk about why the states are powerful. I just said they have a lot of power. How so? State governments pass more and enforce more laws related to your everyday life, yours and mine, everyday life, than the federal government. The federal government's more powerful, more high profile, and has a whole lot more money because of your and my tax dollars. But state governments pass things like criminal statutes, for example, related to drug possession. You know it's legal to smoke marijuana in Washington, D.C. recreationally. Same for a couple of West Coast states. It is absolutely not legal in Kentucky. And a police officer has a legal right. I'm not saying this is right or wrong. I'm saying he has, he's within the law. A police officer sees you smoking marijuana and arrests you, puts you in the, car, in the back of the car and takes you to jail and charges you with possession of a controlled substance, marijuana. Now that's, again, today I'm not gonna get into whether that's morally or ethically okay, but I am telling you it's the law. And those laws, the reason, it's, the reason it's legal in some states and not in Kentucky is because it's a state law. And the federal government gives states leeway and freedom to act on things like that, on certain issues. Um, there are a lot of things that, um, I mean, every day of your life, state law is speed limits. The speed limits are set by the state. Uh, Education, for the most part, public education is controlled by state and local governments. Yeah, the federal government set guidelines and provides some, not much, but some funding for public schools, but most of that's state, most of that's provided from the state and local governments. Don't ever forget that. State government has more to do with your day-to-day -day life. If you all graduate college, or maybe even you already have done this, maybe in past, present, or future, you want to start a business, you want to start your own business. Yeah, you got to register that business with the IRS, which is a federal government agency, but the laws that govern how you're gonna start that business, how the business is gonna operate, who's allowed to take part in it, who can take which part in the business, those are state laws. It's all state law. So state law is really impactful on your day-to-day -day lives. Okay. Local governments. This is where it gets a little weird. So far it's been pretty straightforward. State governments are like smaller versions of the federal government. Federal government gets final say when there's a conflict between the two law, two state and federal law. State governments also have three branches that are the same three branches as federal government. The same name, same function, just state is only within the borders of that state. And the federal uh, branches of government are nationwide. They cover all 50 states and a bunch of territories. Local government is a little different. Kentucky has 120 counties, 120 counties in Kentucky. I actually don't know how many cities in Kentucky. I should know that, but I don't. 
Um, there are a bunch of cities, though. I know that. I know there's uh, every every county has multiple cities in it. And then you have places like Louisville and Lexington. Louisville and Lexington have combined city and state governments. So instead of having a, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, city and county governments. City and county government in Louisville and Lexington are combined. So instead of having a county government with all their branches of government and a city government with the branches of government over there, Louisville and Lexington are combined. Why? Because it's more efficient. It's way more efficient when you have a county like Jefferson County, Kentucky, also known as the Louisville Metro government, where you have one city that was much, 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 much larger than the others, not only in population, but in its tax base, meaning how much tax revenue it gets from the people who live there. Also, um, the political influence of that city on the county government was just so substantial and so much stronger than the other cities in the county. You combine, city and county combined. So, I said earlier, there's a conflict between uh, state and federal law Federal law wins. What about state, federal, local? Well, federal still wins. Federal, federal overrides everything whenever there's a conflict of law. Federal law always wins. What about city and state? Generally, states have their own constitutions. Just like the U.S. has a constitution, Kentucky has a constitution. And then Kentucky has a bunch of statutes that must conform to the state constitution. And that have to do with how much authority cities have and and it varies by state it really does some state in some states local governments within the state borders are more powerful than others and in kentucky just my personal opinion our local governments are not real powerful some of them exert political influence over the state government but they're not they're not especially powerful that's just my opinion you could probably ask a hundred different professors and get a hundred different answers on that but um, local government has to do with things like school. I mentioned schools earlier and how the state does most of funding and the laws that regulate education within the borders of that state. Well, as far as administering the schools, most of that's local. Certainly in Kentucky, every uh, county and some cities have a school board and that board, they administer, they, they run the schools. Same thing with police. Yes, there are state police. There's also federal law enforcement. But most people think about police. They're thinking about municipal, it's local. That's either city police or a county sheriff's department. Um, if you ever see police, I mean, driving around Louisville, they have the gray, the light gray colored LMPD cruisers. That's, that's Louisville police, Louisville Metro Police Department. Um, that's, yeah, that's generally most, most police work is done at least in Kentucky, most of it's done at the local level. Um, cities also have to do things like uh, zoning, telling you how you can and cannot use your land. They also uh, do things like accessibility in public spaces, parks, sidewalks. They do a lot, of, a lot of things that are not near as visible as federal and state government, but they still do them. So, three levels of government. Federal, state, local. Here's the quiz. Here's the quiz. This will be due no later than four o'clock next Thursday. Next Thursday, June 25th. You can, well, the, the, the easiest way to do that is to email it to me. If for some reason you can't do that, let me know and we'll work something out. But uh, so far I've noticed that all of you have been able to, to email pretty well. So, the quiz has Two questions. Each question has two parts. Question one. Identify one of the three branches of the federal government and explain what that branch does. Question two. Explain, I'm sorry, identify one of the three levels of government and name one responsibility of that level of government. So let's talk about that for a second or for a few seconds. Question one, 
Name one of the three branches of federal government. Well, pick one. Just one. I don't need to know all three. Just pick one. And start your question off with that. You can say executive branch. So you got the first part of the first question right. If you said that, for example, just name one of the three. Then explain what that branch does. Lots of ways to explain that. We talked about it on this video today in a recap and certainly talked about it in depth a week ago on last week's lecture. The executive branch, they enforce the laws. They enforce the laws. Their job is to take statutes passed by Congress and execute those laws within the, the bounds of the Constitution. And when the judicial branch says the executive branch has stepped outside the bounds of the Constitution, the executive branch has got to find a new way to enforce whatever law they've been enforcing illegally, so they enforce the laws. That's just one example. There are three branches, and you can explain this in your own words. I don't need a textbook answer. Explain it in your own words. Second question. Pick one of the three levels of government and name one responsibility of that level of government. There are three levels. There's federal, there's state, there's local. Pick just one. Let's say, for example, that you said state government. What's one of the things they're responsible for? Passing most of the criminal laws that impact most Americans. I'm not saying you have to say that. In fact, if you say exactly that, I won't give you full credit for stealing my answer that I just gave you. But you can say something close to that. I just want to look at your quiz and, and know that you understand this material. And I will say this, for some of you, this is a pretty easy quiz. But I always use the first quiz of the semester to gauge where the students are. Uh, if, if I see that some people just found this so easy, they wrote a perfect A plus answer. If I find that everybody does that, okay, next quiz is gonna be a little tougher and I'll make sure that you're challenged but that you're by the quizzes, but that you're learning the material. If I find people are struggling, that's all right, that's okay. That's not your fault, that's my fault. I need to slow down, I need to explain things differently. Um, I need to work with y'all to make sure you're getting the reading material and I can supplement that material. We'll, we'll, uh, my, my point is we'll work it out. We'll make, we'll make it work one way or another. But if you think this is too easy, great, great. Give me your answer and let it be easy. Get your A on this quiz. If you think it's too hard, let me know. Let me know, don't, don't just send me an F quiz when you know while you're writing it, it's about to be an F, reach out to me, text me, email me, and we'll talk about it, okay? I've been teaching at Simmons for well, five years now, and I've, I've never failed anybody who got their participation grade and turned in all their material, all their assignments. Because if they're not doing well in the first assignment, you know, we, I, I would I'd talk to them and work it out. I've never failed anyone who just fulfilled their responsibilities to the class. So, look forward to getting those quizzes from y'all. Don't forget to comment below the video that you watched this week's video. Leave any more questions or, or thoughts or comments you have about this subject matter. But like I told you, this is the driest part of the semester, these first two weeks. This is the part where it's, I mean, it's, it's kind of nuts and bolts, cut and dry stuff. and. We'll get into more, more interesting things as the weeks go, but we had to cover this stuff first. So thank you all for sticking with me. Thank you for watching the first few videos, and I will talk to you all next week. Good luck on the quiz.